back at it if you then think, what the hell is he talking about? Okay. Right, you're going to create three reports. Okay, so this sheet documents just the elements that need to be in each report. All right, so for each one, so you can, this can like um, live in your folder so you can check yourself off, but you're going to print out all your code. You must have your name at the top because the code, to be fair, because you're all doing the same task, is going to look similar. And when they start flying off the printer, it's going to be, who's is this, who's is this? And I don't want it to pick up random bits of code. All right, because that could be a disaster, especially if you start describing your code and what you present isn't the same thing. All right, so we don't want that. Uh, make sure that we have got screenshots of your form. So you can show them in design view or when you do your testing, that shows what your form looks like anyway. All right, so if you feel your test ones are adequate to show what you've designed, then fine. Okay, then you've got all these various elements. It's very important to start your report with an introduction. What does this program do? What have I created? Okay. It doesn't have to be an essay. I just want an introduction of what it is. Then you're going to do the modules. Okay. Now, in this program, we have one module. But obviously, in the other ones that we do, you're going to have more. So let's just look. In this code, that is our module. Okay. The module for form one. If we look at Solution Explorer, your modules are listed. So we've, we've just got that one. So for this one, you can say, oh, I've got one, one module. Uh, it's called form one. Okay. It contains all the code for the calculations that I'm doing. That's it. Okay. When we get on to the other ones, we will do more modules to separate the code up. So that's the module bit. The next uh, right one. The next thing says global variables. Now, on your sheet, this hasn't got anything in it. On your sheet, put that. You haven't got any global variables. All right? So on your sheet, do that. And on the next one, number six, scribble out, okay, the NA on the local variables, because you're going to do local variables in all three programs. We've not got a pen. I'll borrow that first. Okay, we will have global variables, but we won't actually need them until we do program two. They're generally bad global variables, so we try and avoid using them. <coughs> right, so let's have a look. What do I mean by local variables? So you haven't got to talk about this at all, but you will have to do number six. So looking at the program we did together, where we create the space, we're creating a variable. Now, these are what we call local ones because they have been created inside a subroutine. So anything created inside a subroutine is determined to be local. What that means is the only code that can access these values is the code in the subroutine. So they're local. When we get down to the bottom of the code, to this end sub bit, those values are destroyed. They no longer exist. Okay, so that's what we mean by local variables. But what you've got to talk about is, okay, what are they for? And what type of data do they store? So these store real numbers, numbers with fractional parts. Okay, so you need to make sure you say that. We haven't used any other type in this program. But we will in future programs. Okay, so you have to explain that. Going back. To the report, we have to identify input and output. Okay, so in our code, this is doing input, taking stuff from the text box of the user and storing it. Okay, this is doing output. We're displaying something to the user. Okay, so you just need to identify those parts in the code and explain what they're doing. We've then got calculations. We've got like one calculation. It's not much of a calculation, but there is one. And you need to explain it. Obviously, you've got a little bit more complicated because you've got pi and some divides and stuff. But explain. Don't assume someone knows what the asterisk means. We know it means multiply, but people would think x is multiply. But it isn't in programming. It causes lots of problems if you try to use x. 
So just to explain that that calculation is performed and then the result is stored. So you just need to do that. Go back. Uh, but, 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 string manipulations. Now I haven't even used that word. In this one we haven't done anything complicated. Here we've used AND, the ampersand operator. And that's saying take this text and join it with the result of this value, this variable. That's what we call concatenation, where we stitch things together. Okay? If you've got something a little bit complicated where you said, right, display this text and answer and then put and centimeter squared or something like that afterwards, then you're doing more complicated concatenation. But it is just concatenation. And we call that string manipulation. But we will do more complicated manipulation in future programs. The next bit says identify or list all your subroutines. You've only got one in this one. It's this. And just say what the purpose of it. It's a bit of code that runs when the user clicks and it does the calculation. There isn't much to say about it. What I don't want you to do is repeating yourself. There's no need to describe it creates some variables because we know. You've already told me about that. Okay, so the trick on that in these reports is to try not to repeat yourself. That's the bit why I'll need to work with you. We've then got uh, sequence. Identify where you've got a sequence. So in your programs, we can't do that calculation unless we've got the data. So we get the data first, then we can do the calculation, then we can do the output. Okay, and that's a sequence. If we try to do it in a different order, if we did the calculation before we did this bit, it would be multiplying 0 by 2 and 0 by 2 which wouldn't work. Well, it would, it would give us no, but it wouldn't be the answer we wanted. So we have to identify right, why have we done certain things in certain orders. Moving on, we've then got um, selection. So on your sheet, scribble that out, because we have got some decision making that's going on. And you'll have this on all of them. This is the, the last one. For us, we have got try and catch. So we're saying, okay, I'm going to give you a choice, computer. Try and do this. If it goes wrong, do the bit of code that's in the catch block. So we have got a decision process that's going on. Okay? So you must make sure you describe that. And then the final bit is to show your testing. Okay? So this report, keep it nice and structured. Use headings to say, like, okay, local storage, subroutines. Keep it simple, do not repeat yourself. And that will be your biggest task, not to repeat yourself. You only need to say something once, okay? So as soon as you've got this program finished, you then get this report done, and then you can print it off and get me it, and I will check it. But all those people that have finished their code, I need the print out of the code so I can check you put enough comments in, or sensible comments. Okay, right, I'll see you all tomorrow. I'll upload that to YouTube.